This episode, we're making our very first cutscene, and this right here, this is what we're recording this episode. We are finally here. We are finally recording cutscenes, and we're actually going to do two this episode. The first one's going to be the most complicated, and it's going to use our character's own camera. I haven't seen a good tutorial out there on character camera cutscenes, so maybe this will be it. And the second is going to be a really simple cinecam scene just to set the mood, start the sequence. And the cinecam stuff, that's your typical tutorial out there on cinematics. And to be honest, I am the furthest thing from an expert on cameras, cutscenes, cinematics, and I will say it's especially the case this episode. I know I say that every episode, but this episode, I really mean it. One thing prepping for this episode has taught me is that the more you do this stuff, the more you play with sequencer and cutscenes in general, the faster and easier it gets. I got significantly better at this process just preparing and preparing and preparing this episode. But that being said, the preparation for this episode, it took me a lot longer than normal just because I needed to do it so many times to really get it down pat. So if you're not getting this right away, I recommend making backups of your project and just doing it over and over and over again until you get it. It just takes a while to get used to rekeying and get used to sequencer generally speaking so just keep at it and i recommend this for every episode but i especially recommend it for this episode back up your project before you start this episode or at the very least after the preparation steps which is like the first quarter of this episode then back up your project and regarding the preparation steps so i have to apologize because we're going to fix something that i should have done this way all the way back in episode five of this series in relation to cameras and quite frankly back then i just didn't know that having multiple cameras on an actor really doesn't play well with sequencer I have not been able to effectively juggle between multiple cameras in a single level sequence, and for that reason, we're going to reduce our cameras on our character down to one, down to a single camera. But luckily, that setup only takes about five minutes. So a lot of new key concepts this episode, and everything revolves around sequencer. In all this that we're learning today, this is going to set us up for our following episode, the final episode in this mini-series on recording cutscenes, where we're finally going to integrate cutscenes in with gameplay. So let's get to it. All right, so we're going to start with a few things that, quite frankly, like I said, I should have done all the way back in episode five. I should have done it this way, but I've learned a lot over the course of this series, and I ask for your forgiveness. And if you're not following this series, you can skip right over this part. But we're going to set our character, our third person character, and also our adversary AI character. We're going to set both of them to only have a single camera. And that way, recording with sequencer is just going to be much easier. If you have multiple cameras, it's constantly flipping between the two. I just found it to be a real headache. And this solves that problem completely. But then also, so for performance, it's going to be better to have just a single camera instead of two on each individual actor. So if we go back to our content drawer, over to content, into our core folder, back into our third person character, because our adversary AI character inherits from here. So all we need to do is we need to change the cameras here, and our AI character is going to get them. So we got to go back to our event graph and zoom out, come all the way up. Man, how far we've come over this series, huh? All the way back here. And by the way, if you started this on 5.1, in a couple of episodes, we're going to do enhanced input, like how to transition this over to enhanced input. So we're going to update these two macros here, and then we can cut out our second camera. We're going to keep our third person camera, but we'll cut out our first person. But it'll still work the same exact way it does now. So let's start in the camera mouse wheel zoom in macro. So I'm going to zoom in here. The first thing is we could delete out this. We don't need that. And we can move over our input and connect this up just like this. And then I'm going to move over to the right here. And because we're not going to have a first person camera anymore, I can disconnect this. But also, we're not going to deactivate our third person camera. We're just going to reposition it to be a first person camera. So I can disconnect this over here, move these up. And if I come over to the right, I'm going to take our use controller rotation yaw. We are going to need that. Hook that up to the true. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get our TPP camera boom right here. And for this, we need to set the relative location. And basically, what we're doing is we're setting the camera boom to be in the relative location where it should be to reflect first person point of view. So set relative location. The first time I did this, I set world location and then our camera was sitting somewhere in the center of the world. This one right here. Connect this up here. And then the new location here. So you can update this, but mine's going to be X47, Y0, and Z75. And where I'm getting this from is on our first person camera boom. It's this transform right here, 47-0, close enough to 75. And then we're also going to update our TPP camera boom to have that target arm length there. So we're going to take the same reference, paste it, and then we are going to set the target arm length, this one right here. And that's going to be 20 and connect this up. 
and then we can delete out these up here. So if you zoom out, so if you've got this, so input is coming in right there, all this is remaining the same, all this on the right, that's gonna switch our third person point of view over to first person, but only if our distance to our character is less than 40. Compile and save this. Let's go back to our event graph. Let's do the same thing for zoom out. So instead of this being the branch that our first person camera is active because it's not going to be active because it's not going to exist anymore. So we'll delete that out. What instead we're gonna evaluate is if we take our TPP camera boom and we specifically get our target arm length. So get target arm length. And we're gonna to check to see, okay, is this less than 30? Because if it's less than 30, that means we're gonna be in first person point of view. So then we need to do different things if we're zooming out, if it's first person versus third person view. So we can move over here to the right, we're gonna do the top first. So both of these, we can delete those out, we can move our use controller rotation yaw in, connect this up to the true, just like this. And then we need to take our TPP camera boom, that's our camera boom that we're gonna keep, and we are once again setting the relative location, this one right here, and connect this up. And by the way, I should have selected teleport, so select teleport here, I don't think that matters, but just in case, Go back to your other macro and select teleport and then back to the zoom out. So this is going to set our camera boom back to the third person point of view, but we still want the zoom out to have this update down here. So what we can do, I'm just going to add a reroute here and I'm going to take all of this logic and move it out something like that. That's looking good. And then this is going to connect up right here. And the last thing, sorry, I'm doing this out of order because I forgot the new location here. We got to update this to be the proper third person point of view location. So zero, zero. 58.5 and where I'm getting that from is if we go back to our TPP camera boom So this is our default location. So wherever you have your camera boom default location now That's what we need to set it back to to go back to third person point of view All right So the way this is working is when we're zooming out it's checking Okay, are we in first person point of view right now? Because that means the target arm length is going to be 20 which is less than 30 So if it's less than 30, this is true Then it switches back to not use controller rotation yaw switches our camera boom back into the third person position and then it updates our target arm length to start lengthening based on however sensitive our mouse zoom is and this is all the stuff we set up back in episode five so we should be all set compile and save this and before you delete out the first person camera boom and first person follow camera i do recommend testing and actually we should probably delete out our adversary ai character there delete him out for now just for now and when you delete him out, you're going to get this warning saying it's going to break our level sequence that we set up last episode for the face animation. Totally fine. We saved our face animation. We're all set. All right, right click play from here. And now you can test with your mouse wheel. So zoom out. It probably clamps at whatever you set it to. I think I set it to 300 and then zoom in and check your first person point of view. Yep. We're in first person point of view. We're rotating based on our mouse and then zooming out again. So far, so good. So now we can go back to our third person character and we can delete out the FPP follow camera first, then FPP camera boom, compile and save. We get some warnings. This blueprint self is not an actor component, therefore target must have a connection. These are from our character death and character death ocean that we set up last episode. So we can just delete out the deactivate here. Just delete that out. And same with character death ocean. Zoom out there, come over here to the left, delete this out, connect this up. Compile and save again. Third person character is fine. Now your adversary AI character is not gonna be fine, but let's cover that after we test again. Yeah, so it says, are you sure you wanna play an editor following blueprints of unresolved compiler errors? Yes, we're gonna play an editor. We're gonna fix it in just a moment. So I can zoom in, I can turn, yep. And then if I zoom in all the way, I can turn and my character is using controller rotation yaw and that's looking good. So now let's fix our adversary AI character. So let's go back over to content core AI folder. Uh Oh, he's disappeared. Let's go back into that because what happened was we took out the camera and now all the references to the camera that we actually deactivated the camera on our adversary AI character, but all those references are not working. So if I hit compile, could not find a variable named FPP follow camera. So let's go to that. So this right here, this is in our event graph. So disabling cameras on AI characters for performance. Well, we don't need to disable them because they do not exist anymore. Could delete out these, connect this up, compile one more time. Voila, so back to the viewport and make sure you've got your AI character there. Make sure he's looking hunky dory. He's breathing softly, idling side to side, looking good. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, last thing, last test, we gotta drag our AI character into the world and let's just play or simulate, make sure he runs around. Yep, all's well that ends well. Cool, we're down to one camera. 
All right, so we're going to keep our AI adversary character in the world, but I'm going to reposition him. We're not recording the cutscene yet. Hold your horses. We still got a couple more preparation things to do. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to reposition him to the right side down the beach relative to our gameplay ability pickups. And that way I can ensure that he's going to run in that direction along the beach to pick these up. And that's going to be our way of ensuring that the tentacle actually grabs him. So something like right here is good. Put him a little bit further down in the water. That's looking good. That should be enough water where the tentacle comes out. So let's finish out the prep steps. So I shouldn't have closed out the adversary AI character. We got one more thing to do there. And this I only noticed after the fact, but it is important. So LOD sync right here. So what this is doing typically is it's changing the level of detail on the metahuman so that it's not like a crazy detailed render when the character's far away. Now for gameplay, that's important because you want the performance to be good. But for cinematics, don't need to worry about it. We want the metahuman to always be at the highest quality regardless of how close our camera is to the metahuman. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the forced LOD here from negative one, which changes based on distance to zero. And that way the metahuman is always at the highest level of detail. Now the other thing you might want to consider here, it's really up to you, but if you do this I would back up your project. You could bring in an even higher quality metahuman, because I think I'm using the low quality metahuman, but you could bring in the highest quality metahuman specifically for the cinematic to record it to a video file. And if you do that everything will work exactly the same. I would still use force LOD zero, but I would do that in a backup project and the reason is because that will update your metahuman throughout your project, meaning you'll be using the highest quality metahuman even in gameplay. Alright, so once you update the forced LOD here, then we can compile and save and then I'm going to close out of my adversary AI character. Now back in our third person character there's a couple other things I want to do before we start the cinematic. So one is on the character death ocean function that we created two episodes ago and what it's related to if we come over down here to the right it's the physics blend weight for our next zero one because what I found is that with the tentacle when it grabs the character it's a pretty forceful grab and the character's neck does this thing where quite frankly it looks like he broke his neck in that immediate instant which could make sense but then he's also making facial expressions after the fact so that wouldn't make a lot of sense so instead of breaking his neck as soon as the tentacle grabs him we don't want that I'm going to change it to 0.2 and that's going to allow some physics changes to his neck but not to the extent where it looks like his neck is just flat out broken and so we'll compile and save this and we're done with our third person character there's one final piece of prep and this I only found again after the fact for your AI character so all the setup we've done on our AI character just make sure you don't have line trace debugging turned on anywhere because I turned it off in most places but I forgot to turn it off in BT tasks this select patrol location and so what ended up happening is I rendered a video it looked great except I had this silly line trace in the middle of the video it's like we don't need that. So let's go into our BT task, select patrol location. And it's this right here. Line trace by profile, not for duration, just do none. Compile and save that. Close that. All right, we're all set. It's time. So if we go to our content drawer, back to content, and we go into sequences, level sequences here, we're going to create a new level sequence for our cinematic. So under cinematics here, do a level sequence, title it tentacle grab adversary sequence one. And we'll go into that. The very first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make the sequencer a little bit larger and our viewport a little bit smaller. I just found it's easier to work in sequencer that way. And we're going to add our adversary AI character to sequencer. So we can select him in the outliner. We can select him in the world. If I search for PP adversary, there we go. And then plus track here, actor to sequencer. We can pick anything in our outliner or whatever we've got selected. We can pick right up here. And when we do that, it'll probably take just a moment to load them in. But let's get a lot closer. Got to adjust my camera speed too, maybe down to about two. We can get nice and close to his face. And our character is in a T pose. Or is it a V pose now? I forget what T pose is now called now that his arms are not straight out this way. But anyway, the reason that he's in that pose is because the control rigs are loaded automatically with our character, the control rigs for each part of his body. And if we were going to use control rig to actually animate our character right here in sequencer, we could do that. But we're not doing that. We're recording what's going to happen with the tentacle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete out the control rigs. So each of these just select and hit delete. This one, delete, and then this one for the face, delete, and this one as well, delete. And then he's back to our normal, everyday, friendly adversary AI character. So we'll save our sequence here. You can always save right here. And then the next thing we have to do is we have to adjust our camera. So the camera that's built directly into our character is right here. And really what I want is I want a camera that's very close to his face, a little bit to the side, very close up right there. And then over the course of the sequence, we're actually going to adjust the position of the camera. I'm going to show you how to do that. But by default, I'd like it to be right there. So let's go back into our actor. So we'll go back to the outliner here. 
go into our Edit BP Adversary AI character and navigate over to the viewport so we can see our camera. And the nice thing about this is we can change our camera for our Adversary AI character without messing with our third person character. So I'm going to scroll down to the TPP Camera Boom and TPP Follow Camera. So for the camera boom itself, I'm going to reposition that a little bit. So it's going to be 47, so a little bit in front of the character, and we'll keep it at 58 there. And then for the target arm length, well, we're actually going to change it to be in the opposite direction. So it's going to be negative 20. So now it looks like the camera is directly in his face. So we need to spin it around. But for that, we're going to do that on the follow camera here. So for the follow camera, we're just going to put that slightly to his left side. So slightly to this side. So we're going to change the location to be negative 10. And then the rotation, the Z axis, we're going to change that to be 160. And what you want is you want the camera directly facing his face a little bit below the face. So right about there. So the camera's in a good position. We're going to compile and save our BP adversary AI character. We can close out of this. And then if I zoom out a little bit, then we see our camera right there in sequencer. So Sequencer is only going to record the actors that are part of Sequencer. And so we need to make sure to include our tentacle. Otherwise, it's not going to be in the recording. So we'll go to Track, Actors, Sequencer. We'll search for Tentacle, BP Tentacle. Make sure it's in your outliner before you do this. The last update I recommend making in Sequencer here before we record is just hold Control, zoom out on the mouse wheel, make this a lot longer. So move out our red bar here to about 900 and that's going to be about 30 seconds because you always want to err on the side of recording too much. You can always cut down later but we want enough time to get the full sequence. All right last few settings before we record and these were just through a lot of trial and error checking to see what actually rendered best out to video. So if we go over to settings in the top right project settings. So if you search for motion blur so motion blur right up here uncheck that and the next thing is search for software ray tracing. So so software ray tracing mode, and instead of global tracing, change this over to detail tracing. It says when using software ray tracing, Lumen will trace against individual meshes distance fields for highest quality. Cost can be high in scenes with many overlapping instances. So we're not going to keep this for gameplay, but for recording a video, I got the best results using this setting for Lumen. If you're not using Lumen lighting, and if you know a lot more about lighting than I do, then by all means, ignore this. So we're good on project settings, and the only other thing to check to make sure is that the tentacle actor has no collision, that the mesh itself has no collision. Now we never set collision on the tentacle mesh, so unless you set it, you should be good there. Now we are all set ready to record, but before you record, before you record, I don't know why this is, but I always had to make sure to select everything in the sequencer. So select BP tentacle, hold shift, select the top one, make sure everything is selected because what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit simulate in just a second up here, and immediately after you hit simulate, then we're gonna hit record. And if you wanna see this while it's recording, you can hit this little camera icon here next to BP Adversary AI character. This is going to lock the BP Adversary AI character to the viewport. So you're actually seeing in real time what the camera is tracking. And this is a really nice setting because you can always toggle it off and then move around and then you can go right back to seeing what the camera's seeing. All right, so if you're ready, gonna hit simulate, gonna hit record got to do this fast. You can practice it a few times. Simulate. Everything's selected. Record immediately. Record. Three, two, one. And we can also hit our camera right there so we can see it. And already we're seeing an issue, but we'll talk about how to fix it in just a moment. And then we can hit stop. And once we hit stop, then we can go back and go to our tentacle grab adversary sequence here. And we can select the camera right here and then hit play. So now it should be working appropriately. So we have our sequence from the camera. He's getting grabbed and everything else. Now, for whatever reason, the camera did not work when it's recording. It was sitting inside the character. And when the camera got disconnected from the character, which is happening when the character dies, and that's based on the character death ocean logic that we set up two episodes ago, then in the world, you're not seeing it. But here in Sequencer, the camera stays with the character. And I don't know why that is. So if you have any ideas, please let me know in the comments below. But basically, any updates to the blueprints that occur while Sequencer is going, it's not reflecting in sequencer it's basically at the start of the sequence itself like what was the state and it keeps that throughout the sequence all right so we can lock our viewport camera cuts and we can come to about here the underwater and then his soul goes dark that's a joke There's some stuff going on with his eyes when he's underwater but basically we're not going to go that far so we're going to go to about here and what we're going to do is trim it right to there so we can move this over 
and we can also move our red line right over to there. And also I can unlock the camera from the viewport and then I can kind of see where he is at that moment. I'm gonna change my camera speed so I can zoom out. So that's actually further than we're probably gonna go with the cutscene. We really just want the cutscene for that visceral emotional part where he's getting grabbed. It's the part that you saw in the intro. All right, so first things first, we're gonna save the cutscene. So now let's start the process of editing our sequence in Sequencer. So I'm gonna come back to the very first frame here and I'm also gonna lock viewport to camera. And especially over these first few seconds, to me, it feels like the camera is just slightly too high. So let me show you how to move that camera down a little bit. And the first thing is I'm gonna hold control, zoom in, make sure you're at frame zero right there. And the other thing I found just to make this easier is all the stuff that we're not manipulating at all over the course of the sequence, we can collapse all that. So the beard, body, character mesh, eyebrows, eyelashes, face, all that stuff we can collapse. And that's where having the sequencer be a little bit taller or as a separate window, it makes a lot of sense. And the other thing I've noticed with sequencer is that all of your associations to the components that are part of the blueprint, they all break down in sequencer. Meaning, for example, the TPP camera boom no longer has governance over TPP follow camera. So if we change the transform of the camera, we don't have to worry about the boom at all. We just worry about the camera. So I'm going to go under the TPP follow camera here under transform and expand location here and make sure you're at frame zero. And I'm going to change the Z to be negative five and instantly our camera is just a little bit lower. And then to save that, we just hit the little key, the plus sign there with the Z. And in general, I prefer to key the minimum possible things. I've had problems when I key, for example, an overall transform when I only need to key like the Z value. So just key the most specific element you can and that tends to avoid other issues. So then if we move over the course of our sequence, then we're recording from that lower height. So the face sits a little bit higher up in the frame. And actually, I think I prefer it just a little bit higher. So maybe like negative three instead of negative to five yeah that just puts the face kind of firmly in the middle of the frame there and over here it's a little bit higher up in the frame but we can adjust that later on in the sequence and actually like you saw in the intro i'd like to start zooming out the camera a little bit so very gently very slowly once the tentacle comes out of the water because you got to think of it from a third person perspective as this character turns his head we want to kind of look in that direction to see what he's looking at so we're going to move this over to about this point where he's looking at the camera like right before he's snarling at the camera and right here is when i'm going to key the entire transform because past this point we're going to adjust our camera. So I'm going to hit the plus sign next to transform here. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit and this way we're going to be able to adjust this very quickly on a frame by frame basis. The other thing you can do here, I like doing this a lot, is you can select something you key just like that and you can move it out. Because actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to be right about there, like right as he's turning his head in that direction that's where we're going to start to change the camera. So when he's fully turned his head in that direction, so something like right about here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the plus sign next to transform again. I know I'm not following my own reasoning here, but basically we're anchoring the entire transform at this point. And then we're gonna expand rotation here because we wanna rotate the camera towards the tentacle. We wanna look at what he's looking at. So I'm gonna change the yaw here to be 140. And I basically had to play with these settings. We also wanna be zoomed out a little bit relative to his face. So I'm gonna set the Y here to be negative 30. And I'm also gonna set the Z to be a little bit higher, like zero. And then I'm gonna zoom out on the entire sequence and let's kind of watch it frame by frame. So it's showing his face, it moves to the tentacle, it shows that. And actually I think it moves too much in that direction. Like we still want the tentacle kind of off the side of the screen there. So let's do 150, maybe negative 20. So this is where the rekeying comes in handy because we can play with this in real time. All right, so he comes in, he looks over at the tentacle. He's getting angry at the tentacle. And then, so at this point, the viewer really wants to look to the other side, right? His left-hand side, the right-hand side of the screen. So if I scroll up here and you might get some artifacting here, it's not gonna be permanently there, I promise. So I'm just gonna unlock the viewport so we can look at what's going on. And what you'll see is that the tentacle actually goes into the sand. And that's a problem, right? Because we can't show that on the cutscene. That wouldn't be realistic. So we got to figure out some way of not showing that on the cutscene, but still having a convincing cut. And so I'm going to do that really simply via the camera angle. We need the camera to begin swinging in that direction, but it doesn't need to show where the tentacle is going to be clipping with the sand. So I'm going to go back to locking the viewport to the camera. So right there, and we'll come back down to our transform. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the camera up and zoom it out even more. And so right about here, as the tentacles coming around, this is where I'm going to start that transition. So we're going to key the transform again, right about there. Man, his hair is doing all sorts of things. I'm just going to hit save here. Hopefully that fixes it. Nope. 
but if we play it's totally fine all right so now he's back to normal so at about here so as the tentacle is coming around him and as he's getting grabbed like right about here this is where I want to do another transform key. And this is where we're going to zoom out the camera and also come a little bit above him. And that way we'll get a better shot of the tentacle grabbing him, but also we're not going to show where the tentacle is kind of digging into the sand. So here I'm going to set our location to be 50 and then Y also 50 and then the Z at 30. And for our rotation, I'm going to set that to be negative 15. So it's kind of looking down. And for the yaw, I'll set this to be 190. So it's looking over at our character, but you see I'm looking over too far. So really we need to position our camera a little bit out to the side here so what I'm gonna do and this is a nice little trick to have you can unlock the viewport and I'm just gonna move our camera over manually just gonna move it over just like this where I want it to be and I can hit E to switch it over to rotation mode and kind of just pivot it to the exact position where I want it and then I hit add a new key again and it's storing all those positions here and then I can go right back to our lock viewport camera shifts let's take a look yeah so it's already starting to look a lot better right so can we see the sand? Really, that's the question. So right about here, can we see it? Eh, sort of, just barely. So maybe I just rotate it slightly over to the left. So once again, I can unlock it. And then what we're gonna do is just rotate it very slightly and position it maybe a little bit further. And I think I actually wanna move it out a little bit. Come down again, hit key, we lock to viewport and test it one more time. So it's close, moves over to the left, watches the tentacle coming in, zooms out. And right about here is where our character actually moves to 2.7 times size. And there's a couple of ways we can deal with this. And I noticed also, if I go back to the previous frame and actually I can zoom in, yeah, I think it's two frames before this. Yeah, we see the character is very small there. And then if I go to the next frame, the tentacle compared to the character, it's normal size because our character enlarged to 2.7 times size. And so I have a very simple idea for fixing this. And this is how directors fix all sorts of technical issues. It's like, okay, we have this part of the scene that we can't show. Can we just move the camera angle so we don't show that part of the scene that's not looking right? And that's the sand over here. And also we have our character that's increasing in size. That's not gonna look realistic. So how do we fix that? So what about at this frame right Right here where our character is small and the tentacle is big we could just change the camera angle to be a little bit higher and the tentacle will fully cover our character and the way I'm gonna do that is back here on this particular key instead of the Z being 30 let's raise that up to 50 and so then as the camera zooming out it's actually zooming out and up and in that particular moment, the tentacle is fully covering the character. And it's like the magician has the cloth up for one second, or in this case, it's in what, 0 0.03 seconds, because it's one frame, and the character is gonna be, voila, 2.7 times size. So by this frame, he's already enlarged. And by the way, maybe this is just with me recording, but I found that sequencer frequently crashes. So I'm just gonna hit save every step of the way. It resets him back to a T pose, but yeah, it's got everything there. So now here's what I'm thinking. So as the tentacle grabs him, so in this moment, and by the way, there's a keyboard shortcut for this, I should mention. So it's Shift C. I just started using this, but I'm gonna use it a heck of a lot more. So Shift C and that unlocks it, and then you can move the camera around. But what I'm thinking is that in this moment where the tentacle grabs him after he's enlarged, and right now he's full size, we can't yet show the tentacle in the sand, but we can start moving this camera a little bit in that direction and within the next couple of frames so if i go to the next frame yeah it's out of the sand so then we could turn it fully in that direction so how about this so i'm going to move the camera from where it is now to over here and we can do that because i have no longer locked it to the viewport and now we can just easily change the transform of the camera in real time right here and actually before you do this you've got to move to the frame where you want it so maybe two frames over that's where i'm going to do it so I'm gonna move this over, move this over, and then I'll hit the location key node right there. And then we gotta do the same thing for rotation. So I'll hit E, we'll rotate it, rotate it, rotate it, something like right about there and hit for rotation, hit the plus sign. And we wanna make sure that the transition from one to the other is right because look right here. So in that in-between frame, look what it's doing. So it's going from here to there. Sometimes when you hit the key, you know, it does all sorts of funky stuff with rotation. And that's related to the quaternion versus rotator thing that we talked about. Actually, you might have missed the episode depending on where you are in the series because I made it as an addendum to the control rig episode. And I don't know how to fix that. So if anyone knows how to make the rotation smoother in sequencer so that it, you know, actually gets the right location without having to rekey it every time, 
please let me know in the comments below. So what we're gonna do instead, I'm just gonna delete out these three keys here and then we can select our camera and we could just change it manually over here. So we're gonna change the yaw over to 220 and you'll see that it actually saved the key automatically. So then I can kind of preview what the camera is going to show in this window. And it just looks widescreen like that because I made the viewport a wide window. All right, so let's zoom out on the entire sequence and we'll play from the start. And let's take a look, see what that looks like. So shift C and we're back over to our regular mode and then play. All right, he's running, he's running. Camera turns over to the left and then zooms out. Yeah, and the camera's looking pretty good. So I think at this point, what I'm gonna do is I've gotta figure out where I wanna pause this animation, like where I want it to actually end. And we've gotta fix, obviously, our character's transform because right around this area, he's doing some funky stuff, hopping up and down. And we're gonna fix that. But let's actually move where we want our camera sequence to end. So I can drag this in right about at the 220 mark. Yeah, that's good. Save again. All right, so our camera moves out to the left this way. And our tentacle at that point is above the sand. So we're all good there. But then when it actually grabs him, I want the camera to come back over to the right so it actually looks at his facial expression because we want that visceral emotional reaction in the moment to being grabbed by the tentacle. So I'm gonna come down, come down here and we can find the exact spot that we had it before. And actually maybe even this close right here, like zero, negative 20, zero, 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 150. And we can come back to that and we can reset our camera to be exactly there. Yeah, right about there. What do you think? And that's another thing. So this part of the animation, let me disconnect from the viewport of the camera. This part of the animation is where his body's doing the craziest stuff. Like his body's kind of hopping up and down and that's gonna take a lot of rekeying to fix where his body is. So here it's lower, here it's higher, and maybe we can bypass a lot of the rekeying of the actual mesh by just getting in close to his face. But we're still gonna to need to do some rekeying of the mesh because past this point, what I wanna do is I wanna zoom out, kind of swing the camera over. But let's start talking about how we change the position of his character mesh relative to the tentacle. So the first thing is we notice his rotations a little bit off relative to the tentacle, right? We would expect him to be flush with the suction cups here. And the way we adjust his rotation, so the character's actual rotation, is this very bottom transform here. And you could tell you've gotten it because you see the camera then show his face. And make sure you pick the very last one, like right above BP tentacle. And this transform corresponds all the way up here to our actor. So I'm going to come back down again, and I'm going to expand the transform here. And we see we already have keys for location and rotation there's already a key for the character's location every single frame and there's also keys for scale when he scales up from one all the way up to well 2.7 times size so what i'm going to do is hold control i'm going to zoom in to that specific frame and we're going to take a look at his rotation there so we want him to be turned a little bit into the tentacle so i'm going to expand rotation here and that's going to be our yaw and i'll change this over to eight and maybe even lower like two so now he's really rotated into the tentacle but we encounter an issue with the next frame let me show you so if I go to the next frame, then his rotation is right back to where it was, 23. So how do we fix that, right? Like how do we keep a consistent change in rotation across all the frames? And for that, we're gonna use something called an additive track because otherwise you're gonna be adjusting, well, like hundreds of frames individually. So what we're gonna do is if you select that transform right here, so not this one for vocalization, so collapse that just so you're not accidentally selecting that. So this transform right here, we gotta to go to add section. We're gonna add an additive transform track. And that's this green bar here and we can expand that. That's the most bottomist, the most bottomist transform right above BP tentacle. And what we can do is if I go to the next frame, so right here, this is where we are going to rotate our character and because it's additive it's going to save that additional rotation so i'll change our yaw here to 20. nope wrong direction so negative 20 just about there and it doesn't need to be perfect with the suction cups like if he's a little bit too close that's fine because keep in mind we're going to have the camera camera is actually going to swing out from where it is now it's going to swing back here so as long as it looks like you know it's pretty close but we also see that he's rotated a little bit to the left right we actually want to rotate him straight up but before we go on to the rotation so for our additive track so make sure you got the green additive selected negative 20 yaw plus sign but i also want to change his rotation upwards and that's going to be i believe our roll yeah so that's going to be actually negative 10 something like that so i'll key that and then over here, what I'll do is I'll key it again and we'll make it negative five. And that way it's a slight adjustment. Maybe I'll even make this a little bit higher. Let's do negative 12, negative 14. Yep, so that he's flush, completely flush with the tentacle. And then we get into a bunch of positioning issues and I'll show you that in just a second. But before you do anything else, just hit save here, save your sequence. 
bring it back to that moment. You're looking good. All right, so let's keep going with our character. I'm going to position myself a little bit outward. And the positioning issues that you're going to run into is that the tentacle is not in the correct position relative to the character every single frame. When he's being kind of bounced up and down like this, it's all over the place. And to fix that, I'm not going to use the additive track because the additive track is going to then persist across the entire animation. So instead, what we're going to do is fix that on an individual frame by frame basis. But before that, so let's just get his rotation right in the additive track. So here, that's looking pretty good, but maybe rotate him even more so instead of negative 20 maybe negative 25 so he's rotated a little bit more inward negative 30 and we see it added the keys automatically so that's looking better but for the position now we got to fix that individually frame by frame wish i had a better way of doing this but for whatever reason the tentacle is not completely in line with him so we have to expand our transform up here so Try not to mix up these two. So if you see the dot, 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 dot across every frame, then you know you're in the right place. And what you're looking for is you're looking to see, okay, where's the position of the bottom of his t-shirt? Like where does the t-shirt get cut off? His arms of the t-shirt relative to the tentacle. And I'm trying to line those two things up perfectly. So actually here before the additive track, I'm just gonna adjust a few things manually. So we're gonna come up here to rotation and we'll just adjust these. So it'll be eight in this one, two. And then for location, I'll just select 260. And and we don't need to rekey these because they've already got keys at all those locations. Same kind of thing back here. So I'm just going to rotate him slightly, move him down slightly. This one, two degrees, so he's more upright. And we got to move him down slightly, maybe 340. This one, he's rotated too far in that direction. So maybe outward a little bit. And also to the right, that's better. And then down, save that. This one, he's a little bit too high, so 115 maybe. All right, so now we gotta start fixing his position. Well, we have been frame by frame, but now we really gotta start looking at it. And luckily we only have to do this for about 20 frames. So right here, I'm gonna raise him up a little bit. Here, obviously the tentacle is way too high relative to him, so we're gonna raise him up a lot. Let's do 300, 315, rotate him slightly, 40 degrees. Next one, also raise him up, 340. No, way higher, 360. And I think I'm gonna tilt the relative tilt. I'm gonna make this further as well. This negative 14, we're gonna change this to negative 20. This frame, we're gonna move them up some more, 370, and just save periodically here. I'm gonna key the roll here to, let's do negative 18, so a little bit to the left. No, maybe like negative 20. And I'm gonna key the yaw here. We're gonna go over to negative 30, turn inward a little bit, and also a little bit further down his actual location, 220. And so now this is the part where the tentacle slams him in the water. I really like this part. Yeah, so there he's a little bit too low. We're gonna raise him up 30. And we also gotta change the rotation again, the yaw. I get 35. So this is the part where he's under the water. I don't think we really need to adjust him there because the camera is going to be above the water. So between these frames, so in this position, he's looking pretty good right there. And here, where is it? Right there. Yeah. So obviously he's too high there. So we just got to adjust a few frames here and I'll kind of work backwards here. And we got to check once again his rotation, see if that's looking okay. So I think we need to turn him a little bit to the left. So I'm going to add a new key on the additive track for roll. I'm going to change this to negative 15 and move him slightly down. So 280. I think I'm going to add under the additive track, under location here, we're just going to move him down a tiny bit, like negative 10. And that's going to be added to the additive track. And that's going to keep him a little bit lower. And then maybe the following frame, I'll just do negative 20 or two frames later. And then a few frames after that, I'll do negative 30, just keep moving them down, but very slightly over the course of that. Yes, just so that's grabbing him kind of the upper body. And also keep in mind from last episode, his arms are kind of pulled in, so that's perfect. So we'll save again. So that's looking pretty solid now. Um, let's actually zoom out. We got our handy dandy keyboard shortcut, Shift C, we're ready, play. There comes the tentacle the shock and the awe and that's it uh, but obviously we need to change our camera so save everything and let's finish up our camera adjustments all right so right here so back where we finished keying our camera we're all done with the character we can collapse all of that stuff so 
I'm going to collapse the transforms, but back to our camera. So what I want to have happen, let me do shift C again just to unlock. So I want the camera to as he's getting pulled back into the water, it's going to be pretty intense, right? So I want the camera to kind of swing around and also keep in mind that the tentacle here is now out of the sand, we can actually show that side of things. So what I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit here, I'm going to set our actually I'm going to set our location, these three nodes, I'm going to move these out so that they match up with the rotation there. And then I'll move out just a couple of frames. And I'm going to start zooming the camera out and we'll move out the camera like this. And I'm also going to swing it over and then I'll key the location and then we got to change the rotation. So switch over to E, turn it in that direction, maybe also turn it slightly down and hit key there. And what you want to make sure is that this doesn't happen, right? So where the rotation spins the camera all the way around. So what I'm going to do just to prevent that from being the case, I'm going to turn it just like this, key the rotation again. So now it's keeping it consistent. So it's zooming out in those moments. And what I can do is I can take these three and zoom them out and these three as well for location, same thing. So over the course of a few seconds, it's going to zoom out. And this is right at the point where it's going to dunk him under the water like that. So what I want to have happen when it dunks him under the water is I don't want the camera to go under the water. And the reason is if we get in really close to his eyes, his eyes are doing weird things. Basically, they're going completely black under the water. And that has to do with the post process effect of the water itself. So what I'm going to do there is we're just going to transform the camera to be upwards quite a bit and out I'm going to put it out a little bit more. So something like this, and then hit key for location. So we can see the camera kind of zooming out as he goes into the water, but we also have to rotate it accordingly. So we're going to switch over to E rotate it a little bit down. Actually, I kind of like it crooked like that. It gives it a sense of just being jarring and then key the rotation. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing the camera over in this direction. And we're also going to zoom back into his face as he comes up out of the water. So we'll go a few more frames and the camera's already sort of doing that, but I'm going to reposition it to be a lot closer, a little bit lower and key and just make sure it evenly moves there. Yep. That's looking good. And then we also have to rotate it E move it over down a little bit and key the rotation. And once again, we're testing to make sure the rotation is smooth. That's looking good. So it's starting to come back in again to basically go right into his face. So we're going to move it very close and down a little bit over this way and then key the location. I'm also going to hit save here, go back to that frame and I'm just going to change the rotation very slightly. All right. So let's watch that play. So that's really fast, right? So it's moving very quickly through those frames, but it's coming in, it's going out. So right about this point is where I want the camera to go in very close to his face, but then start fading out. And so that feels like the tentacle is moving away, pulling him into the ocean and the camera's just kind of fading out. So around this position, we're going to move in very close. I'm going to get right into his face, like right there. Key E, we're going to rotate in, rotate over rotate up key again for rotation. And here's where I'm going to have some slow motion. So I'm going to hit location key again, just to keep that consistent just for a few moments at that position. And then I want the camera to start moving out to the right here. And let's see if I go to about the halfway point here, if I can move the camera that far out. And then let's see if I spin it around a little bit like that a little bit down key it. Let's see how well it keeps the rotation. Okay. So it's spinning around totally again. So what I notice here is it's going from negative to positive. So it's going from negative 167 over to 33. So what we could do is instead of 33 here, we could just kind of reverse that. So it would be negative what 330 or negative 327. So let's try that. So if we set our yaw to negative 327, so it basically keeps it consistent, but now, yeah, that's actually fairly close. And we could do the same thing with the roll and the pitch. And I think with the roll and the pitch, I'm just going to key each one of those manually. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to get in close. We're going to go just to the next frame, the next frame, and I'm going to start spinning and rotating. And we're just going to key it at its new rotation. And I'm also going to zoom it out just a tad key the location right about there, key the rotation. So we're okay here. We're okay so far to about there. And that's when the weird spin around starts occurring. So that's where we got to fix it. So I'm going to key the rotation as it currently stands right there. 
and then we're gonna zoom in to the next frame, literally the next frame. And I'm just gonna switch this over. Instead of 88, we're gonna be at what? Negative 280. Set our pitch to negative 40. Yeah, a little bit lower. Or let's do like negative 35. Now let's see how that goes from one key to the next. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I think we gotta add another key here where it tilts up just a little bit, like negative 40. Nope, the other direction. So negative 25. No, do, 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 do. Yep, that's pretty nice. So it's basically zooming out, zooming out, zooming out. Maybe to end it, what we do is just swing the camera around the other way. So what I'm gonna do, this is ambitious. I don't know if this is gonna work. So I'm gonna move it all the way out. Oh, let me move to the halfway point. So right about here and I'll key the location and then I'm gonna spin the rotation and I'll key that as well. Yeah, see, it's not preserving that, but we'll fix that. And then what I'll do is all the way at the end, we will move it out, move it out, move it up a little bit and out and key the location again right there and then switch it over to about there and rotate it accordingly and key the rotation again. It's doing a spin over and then a spin again. But one idea I just had is maybe we can cut these right in the middle. So the camera will pass kind of over him and then to the other side. And then maybe what we can do there is just lower down a single axis. So just like that and then key the pitch. I think that's it. And yeah, so that's looking pretty good. It's actually spinning him around and out. And I wonder if we slow motion that, how that looks. But let's play the whole thing from the start, from the top and see what we got. Save the sequence and lock it to the view click off our character so the only parts that I really don't like are when it suddenly zooms out right it's this part right here where it zooms out suddenly so that's the part where I really want that to be slow motion so let's do slow motion so to start the time dilation we're actually going to come back all the way to the front and what I'm going to do is up here up in the top track plus here if we expand that we see an option for time dilation track so let's add that it's going to come all the way down to the bottom in a time dilation track it works exactly as it sounds so if this is one the whole way through we've got regular time but if we set this to something like 0.3 it's going to play 30 percent speed so here's what i'm going to do so it's going to be normal speed right up until about this part this is where i want to make it slow motion to start we're going to have a few different parts where it's slow motion but right about here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to key right there at one and that's going to ensure that our entire first half here so that's regular time and then if i zoom in so i'm going to move next frame over and we're going to switch that actually let's move it over to about here and i'll key again and now i'll hit 0.3 and we can actually watch that so let me go back here and play and 0.3 is a little bit slow to me maybe let's do 0.5 try that instead and then hit play yeah, that's better. And I think I even want to extend that out a little bit. So maybe to about there to start and maybe this to about here. And we're going to actually trim the very front of this because, well, he's just walking normally for a little bit too long. So how about I take the green bar, move this over to about here, then hit save. All right, so it switches to half speed right at this mark. So I think I want to resume full speed right as his expression is changing from angry to, well, a little bit of surprise. So we'll hit plus sign again, and then back to here, we will make this full speed. And so let's test that out. Let's play. Yep, that's pretty good. And it's pretty intense when he's getting grabbed. Maybe half speed right here with his face, or maybe we even do a third speed. So. Let's go to the frame before and plus sign and then the frame after. Yeah, so this let's do 0.3 and maybe it's just a very short amount of time where it's on his face. And then a couple frames later back to one. So let's take a look at that play. Slow motion. And I think 0.3, it's actually too fast there. So let's do maybe 0.1 and then this right here also 0.1. And let's save that. Let's try it again. Play. Slow motion. And I noticed the camera being spun around there. So we got to fix that. So I got to zoom in. And I think that only occurred because of our time dilation. Like if I put that back to 0 0.2 and this to 0 0.2, let's see if that same spinning still occurs. Yeah, I think the switch is happening right here because we see it go from 150 to negative 168 right there. 
And so what that means is we can't do our time dilation during these frames because it's switching from one to the other. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna move the time dilation over here. I'm gonna move it a little bit over this. I'm gonna switch back to there, right about there. So we'll hit save on sequencer. Let's test it out one more time. Yeah, that's actually better because it feels like it's slow motion going into his face. So here it's one, here it's 0 0.2. I'm actually gonna move that out a little bit. So maybe right about there, test again. Yeah, I like that. So you just gotta play with these, right? You just gotta see how the slow motion is gonna work along with your rekeying. Now I could rekey our entire camera here, but I don't think it's necessary. I think it's okay to have that jarring and that flipping just in that one frame, because it's a jarring scene. I mean, he's being grabbed by a tentacle. So this is gonna be regular speed, regular speed, regular speed. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, move over. I think as he comes out of the water, this is where I wanna switch it to slow motion again. So right about here, yeah. So it pulls into his face again. And that's where the transition back to slow motion is going to occur. I feel like that's almost too slow, right? Goes to 0 0.1, and then maybe we can put it back to like 0 0.5 shortly thereafter. Maybe let's say two frames after, and let's watch it from there. And maybe we do another and we do it to 0 0.1. Let's see, I think we're gonna have some of that camera flipping again. Yep. Yep, and because it's a double flip, maybe I can just get rid of those keys completely. Let's see if I can just get rid of those keys. So we're at 88, and then, yeah, so here it's 88, and that switches over to negative 280, and then it switches to negative 327. If instead of negative 280, I switch this to 80, and this one move over here instead of negative 327, we switch over to 33. So it's basically the inverse of 360 degrees. Yeah, we still have some flipping there. Yeah, so we go from negative 167 to 121. So all of these, I actually have to flip to the inverse. Negative 240 for this key right here. Then we go to the next one from 88. We flip it over. Negative 272. Next one from 80, we're going to do negative 280. And you don't even have to actually select the key. You just have to be on that time. And then the last one from 33, we switched over negative 327. I think maybe that'll be fixed. Yep but I do wanna change something here. So he's being pulled out and I want that pulling to be more gradual. So I'm gonna take these, we're gonna move them over and just for a few seconds and then he's gonna be pulled out gradually and then quickly. We're also gonna switch this, the time dilation with these where it's starting to pull out the camera. I'm gonna start it right there to be 0.2. So from about here, it's 0.5 and it's also gonna flip over. So let's take a look at that. Let's hit save, save the sequence, play. Looking pretty good. And then he's being pulled out. And one thing I'm thinking is maybe we don't even have to move it out to this sequence, right? It's just moving way too much during this time frame. And I don't think we need to move it out to the right over here. We can just move it over to the left. So what would happen if I delete out all of these keys right here? Because sometimes this happens, you know, you key something, you think it's gonna be good, and then it makes sense to simplify it, get rid of a key. So right there, what happens? Okay, so we gotta change some things there. So here, I'm gonna set our pitch a little bit lower. So negative 50, yep, that looks good. Next one, we'll do even lower. Let's do negative 70, negative 55. And we'll also change our yaw a little bit, negative 270, yep maybe negative 260. This one as well, we'll do negative 220. And this one will do negative 50. And I think that might take care of the whole thing. I think I just got to pitch a little bit upwards here. So negative 40. Nope, too high, negative 50. And this here as well, let's do negative 30. Nope, too high, negative 40. And I think I want to shorten the sequence just slightly. So right about here, I think I'm just going to drag this in there. And I think we are ready to test out the real deal. And it's going to be no longer in seven seconds here, but okay, let's give it a go. So play. Slow motion as it grabs him. Oh, I like that hair. And that pulls in, it pulls back. And maybe I even make this go from 0 0.2 to a little bit faster towards the end. So key again and make this 0 0.5 for the time dilation. One last run through. And there you have it.
save the sequence. So now we've got to export this sequence, right? And before we do that, before we do that, I want to do one last thing, which is we can make the entire sequence just a little bit more vibrant. So I'm going to switch our environmental lighting to get rid of the fog because I think it's just going to be you know, a more powerful scene if we get rid of the fog. So if I go under window and environmental light mixer, switch this from minimal over to normal, come down, come down, come down to our exponential height fog. Let's do 0 0.01. So just a very, very light fog. Yeah. So now everything's just a lot clearer. All right. So let's export. So the way we do that is up here, we have a render this movie to a video or image frame sequence. And I am really unsophisticated, so I choose AVI. This exports the sequence in video format already. I am told the professionals use EXR. I am not a professional. So we are gonna keep it with .AVI. We're keeping it at 30 FPS. I'm gonna change the resolution to be 4K. We're gonna do the real deal. Everything else I keep exactly the same, and then we hit Capture Movie. And we're gonna have an issue, and I'll explain what's going on. So Capture, and then Save Selected. And you're gonna see the inside of your character's head if everything goes to plan. So at first when this was happening, I was like, oh geez, can I change this? Can I fix this? And luckily there's a really easy fix. So I'm gonna cancel this so we can say stop capture in the bottom right. I know you can't really see that, but stop capture. It says capture finished, but it wasn't really finished. So the way we fix that, it's really simple. I'm gonna exit out of this. We're gonna come up to the top. Instead of BP adversary AI character being a possessed character, a possessable character, we need to right click, convert it to a spawnable. And this means that the level sequence actually spawns the character. Keeps everything else, but it makes this independent from the overall scene and what that does I don't know why this works but then we can render it to an AVI file just fine and it works just the way you see here so this right here render this movie to a video or image sequence gonna do the same exact thing capture movie save and there we have it so it's gonna take a few seconds depending on how long your sequence is we'll probably take my machine about 20 seconds here maybe 30 seconds yeah he's not having a good day And boom, done. So then if we minimize this and we go back into our Unreal Engine Projects folder, and specifically I'm doing this in Rehearsal, and then we go under Saved, and then we go under Video Captures here. So whatever you named your level, that's gonna be the name of the file. So this is the first one that rendered inside his head. So if I play that, yeah, this is not the one we want, not the droids we're looking for. Yeah, so here we go. So now we got the real deal. Now, the first time I tried this, I ran into this weird issue where the landscape disappeared. If that happens to you, just save the sequence, restart the engine, and it should work fine. Now I'm gonna go back into Unreal Engine and save the sequence. We're gonna close out of this. And the second to last thing we're gonna do for this episode is we're gonna record a very quick sequence, like no more than one second. It's a cine camera, which is a standard camera for capturing cutscenes, and it's separate from our character. And we're just gonna have that camera kind of descend slowly on the character while in that one second as he's walking in the water close to the beach because I want a moment in time where we can actually like set the stage for the scene in this way you'll get to see how to use a cine camera so let's record that now and then we'll bring them together with a free program that I use and I use this program to make all my videos it's called DaVinci Resolve so first things first, because we converted our actor, our adversary AI character to a spawnable, when we got rid of the level sequence, it takes it out of the scene because our level sequence is no longer in the scene. So let's get a new adversary AI character into the scene. So we'll put him at the same exact spot. Right about there is fine. And what I'm thinking is we set up the cine camera to be somewhere around, man, I gotta lower my camera speed. I think we set it to be somewhere around here because this quick film that we're making, this literally like eight second movie, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have one second of this where the camera kind of comes into focus and we see our character just walking in the water along the beach, a nice summer morning. And then his day turns out, well, a little bit less nice. And next episode is when we'll incorporate that cutscene into gameplay, but it won't be the full eight seconds. It'll be more like two seconds. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to content drawer, content, back to sequences, level sequence, and we're gonna right click, create a new under cinematics, new level sequence, and we're gonna title it Cine Camera Tentacle Grab Intro. And we'll open that up. And the first things first, we gotta select our adversary AI character or there in the outliner, track actor to sequencer, Adam. Same thing we did before, we delete out our control rigs, CR, face, face, and save. So then we're going to add a camera to the scene, create a new camera and set it as the current camera cut. 
And this is the proper way you're supposed to do this, not using the camera that's actually on the character. So we got our Cine camera actor and it's already a spawnable. We could convert it to a possessable, but I'm gonna keep it spawnable. So by default, when you put the Cine camera into the scene, then wherever you move to, it's actually gonna move the Cine camera with you. But if you get out of that state, what you can do is you can just right click on the actor. So if I go back to Outliner, right click here and say pilot Cine camera actor. And then when I do that, when it's pilot active up here, then I can actually move it to the exact position where I want it to be. So I think for me, I want the adversary AI character to be just out of frame, like something like this should be fine. But actually I'm changing my mind. Instead of looking at his back, let's look at his front so I can move it all the way over. And by the way, this is actually how you can pilot any single actor in your outliner. It's a good trick to know. And once I position that into the spot where I want it, I can hit this little button up here. It says stop piloting. And actually I want it to be a little bit closer. So let me just adjust it the normal way. Just move it up and I can see it right there. Maybe over a little bit right in the middle of the scene. Okay, so what I wanna have happen with this cine camera is I want it to basically be out of focus and then come into focus over one second and also slowly descend like you're entering into the scene. So for the transform here, we're just gonna key the transform, plus sign right there. And I'm also gonna key the manual focus distance here because I want it to be out of focus to start and then come into focus. And we're gonna do this with the filming over two seconds, but we're probably gonna cut that down to just one second, but maybe two seconds. So at 0060, then I'm gonna key the manual focus distance again. So I'm going to expand the transform here and I'm also going to expand location. We're not gonna change rotation at all in this scene. And for location, we're just gonna key right there at 0060. Now through trial and error, I just decided that the coming into focus would be in the first second. So at the 30 frame mark. So we're gonna key again the manual focus distance. So we've got all of our keys and now we just need to adjust them. So what I'm gonna do is for manual focus distance, this is going to start at a very, very small number. So just 100. So you can see right there, it's very blurry to start, but it's gonna come into focus very quickly. So if I move it along, yeah, you can see that just fine. And if I go to 0060, I'm just gonna move it down slightly and then move it forward slightly as well. So all it's gonna do, and since we keyed already, I don't even think we need to hit this again, but I'm gonna do it just in case. So all I'm gonna do is move it down slightly, hit the camera there, and then play. Yeah, so it just comes down very slightly, and actually, it's almost coming down too slightly. So let's make the Z maybe 150, click the camera again, and I'm just gonna move it forward even more, and key the location again. All right, so we're gonna save the sequence, and we are ready to rock and roll. So as soon as we hit simulate here, then we're gonna hit record, and hopefully we get it before the tentacle gets him. But first things first, let's just select everything in the sequence just so that we're ready. So hold shift, select everything, good to go. Hit simulate, hit record, yep, record, we are ready. And the tentacle is gonna come out, but that's okay, we got what we needed. So I'm gonna stop simulating, stop the recording. And to see what this looks like, I'm gonna come down here, select our cine camera actor here. And to be honest, I don't like the way this looks because he's up to his chest in the water. Just doesn't look that realistic. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna re-record it and I'm gonna move him a little bit further out. So I'm gonna come back to here and we will just re-record by taking the whole actor out deleting him just like that. We can delete out the camera cuts track and just make it so that he's in shallower water. And we can move our camera in quite a bit as well. All right, save. We're gonna add him, actor sequencer, add our adversary AI character, get rid of control rigs one more time. We select everything. So he's a little bit to the left there. Let me just change the position of our camera. Move this a little bit. You want him to be basically center frame. A little bit more. And once you've got that, then you can hit key, save the sequence, round two, select everything, make sure to select everything, simulate, record, and stop simulating. Let's take a look. Make sure to choose the appropriate camera, just like that, play. Yeah, that's pretty good. So even though I didn't even intend for the camera to move down and to the right like that, that looks pretty good. And that's because I only adjusted this set of keys and not this set. So we're gonna keep that. I think that's gonna work just fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the end point to be right there at that 0 0.6 mark and actually a little bit further. Let's do 0, 0, 004. Save our sequence and then I'll come back up here and render this movie to it. Now, if it captures your character again, so what I found to fix that is we have to delete out our camera, the TPP follow camera. We can delete this out. And from the camera cuts here, if we say camera, cine camera actor, I'm gonna choose that one and then save the sequence and let's render it again, capture movie.
And then once we change the camera cuts, then we've got our appropriate camera. And that's all there is to it. We just want one second as it's coming into focus because we're gonna switch over to the other video. So let's exit out of this. We are good with Unreal Engine. So we can close out, save everything. Now for making all my episodes, I use DaVinci Resolve. It's a free program. There are some bells and whistles you don't have if you get the free version, but you get some pretty good stuff even with the free version. And you can render 4K video without a watermark. It works really well. So once you open up DaVinci Resolve, you'll also need your project folder open. So video captures here. And we're gonna take our render, which is the island version one, two. Yep, change your project frame rate. And then our last one, Island version one five. So this was our intro scene. And then from our media pool for DaVinci Resolve, I just drag that down here. First frame or two, you might wanna cut because it's gonna be dark. So we can right click and say split, delete out that. And I got a standard workflow for most of my episodes where I go to the color tab and I do a color boost by about 10. So nothing too crazy. And I also change the hue slightly, which gives it, I think, a more reddish hue. And if I go back to cut, so, so far, so good. So he comes into focus. Let's see how quick that is. Yeah, it comes into focus very quickly. And then that's where we're going to add our second scene. So I'll add this here. And I think I'll just cut out those first couple of frames again because, yeah, so there's some weird stuff going on in the first couple of frames, which is totally fine. And we'll do the same kind of color changes, color boost 10 and hue 51, go back to the cut, and then let's watch the full thing. So to be honest, I don't even think we need that much of the first scene, but I guess I'll keep it. And yeah, his hair's doing his hair flip thing, and then it zooms out and over, and yeah, there's our cutscene. And I could have even adjusted his body to be a little bit more centrally positioned within the tentacle, but to be honest, it's B+. And feel free to play with this, guys. Let me know what you come up with. If you post something to YouTube and it's good, post it in the comments below. And yeah, I'd like to see what you do. And then to render this to a video in DaVinci Resolve, very simple. We go to Deliver over here. I'm just gonna get my particular folder for this episode. We're gonna go to browse and I'm gonna paste that in. And this is actually gonna be my intro scene, but I'm gonna record over it. So the intro that you saw for this episode, I recorded after I'm recording this right now. So instead of scene two video intro final, we're gonna call this our scene one and I'll just call it scene one intro pre-recording but you can call it whatever you want, save. And I keep all these settings pretty much the same. Uh, the one thing I do that's different than Norm is I use QuickTime format. I ran into some problems using either AVI or MP4. So I just use QuickTime and it's always worked great. I keep the resolution 4K, frame rate at 30, that's fine, quality best. And add to render queue. And then we render. It should be pretty quick because we got a short video here. Complete in 12 seconds. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So that concludes our episode for today. And in our next episode, integrating our cutscene in with gameplay. So I hope to see you there.